Let's get into it. What a week. <laughs> Pro-Palestinian demonstrators at Columbia University took over Hamilton Hall, a building on campus, early on Tuesday. Hamilton Hall was also taken over by students protesting the Vietnam War in 1968. During that protest, students used furniture to barricade the doors and prevent the acting dean from leaving his office, holding him hostage for a night. The acting dean commented that he wasn't planning to stay overnight anyway and hadn't been sleeping there due to issues with his wife Paula, and there was no reason to inquire as to why he already had a pillow and a blanket and a sad little dop kit. In the wee hours... On Wednesday, hundreds of NYPD officers descended onto Columbia's campus at university officials' request and arrested 109 people as they cleared the hall of protesters. Columbia also began suspending students who refused to leave the main encampment. We now go live to Columbia University President Manu Shafiq for her reaction. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. <laughs> UCLA canceled classes on Wednesday after a large group of seemingly pro-Israel counter-protesters violently attacked a pro-Palestinian encampment on Tuesday night, throwing at least one firework into the camp. In total, more than 2,000 people have been arrested on approximately 60 American campuses as the protests continue to spread. Now, this is why I became a cop, said a police officer, wrestling a 105-pound bisexual psych major to the ground. <laughs> Protesters at Brown University reached an actual deal, with the university announcing that its corporate board will vote on a proposal to divest from Israel interests in exchange for students taking down their encampment. How are kids from Brown doing deals? Cornell kids? Penn kids, sure, but Brown? Those kids negotiated through what? Spoken word poetry? That's ridiculous. President Biden weighed in on the campus protests from the White House on Thursday. We are not an authoritarian nation where we silence people or squash dissent. The American people are heard. In fact, peaceful protest is in the best tradition of how Americans respond to consequential issues. But, but, neither are we a lawless country. <clears throat> we are a civil society. An order must prevail. Spoken like a man who's never been to the air conditioner section of a Target during the first heat wave of the year. <laughs> Biden went on to say... There's the right to protest, but not the right to cause chaos. There is no place for hate speech or violence of any kind, whether it's anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or discrimination against Arab Americans or Palestinian Americans. It's simply wrong. There's no place for racism in America. Well, Biden just lost the chaos caucus. That's what I call my friends who let their phones get down to 2% battery. <laughs> Speaking of people running out of juice, on Thursday, Trump denied ever falling asleep during the trial, despite multiple outlets reporting every time he does. The former president wrote on Truth Social, contrary to the fake news media, I don't fall asleep during the crooked DA's witch hunt, especially not today. I simply close my beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> Sometimes listen intensely and take it all in. First of all, that's just funny. Uh, we have to just we have to just face it. That's funny. Also, I I guess I just never noticed that Trump's eyes are blue. There are just so many more urgent features of his face <laughs> and head. You never attend to his eye color. This followed Judge Juan Mershon's decision to fine Trump a total of $9,000 for nine violations of the gag order and warned that the court will not tolerate continued willful violations of its lawful orders. Mershon then issued his warning again much louder before sighing and asking Trump's lawyer to nudge him awake. <laughs> More importantly, the judge went on to say that if necessary and appropriate under the circumstances, he was prepared to send Trump to jail if he continues to attack jurors and witnesses. Trump then made the my lips are sealed gesture and the lock and throw away the key gesture before tweeting out an artist rendering of the judge's wife getting plowed by Alvin Bragg. But... But Donald Trump also somehow found time between court appearances to outline what his second term would look like in a lengthy interview with Time magazine. And spoiler alert, it would not be tight. <laughs> tight. Why did we say tight? With the exception of the Diet Coke button. That's tight. 
Trump said he would build detention camps and deploy the military in order to deport more than 11 million migrants. He also told Time that he would permit states to monitor women's pregnancies and choose whether to prosecute women who violate abortion bans. Way ahead of you, said Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, watching a woman buy a pregnancy test from across a Walmart pocket, parking, fucking fuck, <laughs> leave it in. Walmart parking lot through a pair of binoculars. You get it, he's being a fucking freak. Trump refused to say he'd veto. Nice, thanks. Trump refused, the, the pity, that's perfect. That's the energy. <laughs> Trump refused to say he'd veto a national abortion ban because, quote, number one, it'll never happen, and number two, it's about states' rights. Trump has always been clear on this. If women want rights, they must first become states. <laughs> but if it's about states' rights, then it should be no problem to say you'd veto a national abortion ban. It's almost as if he's just saying stuff. When pressed, Trump acknowledged the possibility of violence surrounding the 2024 election and seemed fine with it, saying, I think we're going to win, and if we don't win, you know it depends. It always depends on the fairness of an election. Hard to believe that Trump inciting violence after he loses again is our best case scenario. That's the best we can do. He won't have the National Guard at his disposal this time, just a bunch of middle-aged Facebook warriors who don't have a great relationship with their kids. Anyway, speaking of loudmouths with beautiful blue eyes, Georgia congresswoman and lady in athleisure making a scene at the state fair because she thinks the whack-a-mole was rigged against white people, Marjorie Taylor Greene, said Wednesday that she will force a vote to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson next week. That is, unless one of Johnson's new Jewish friends taught him how to neutralize a golem. <laughs> Just in the event that, that a desperate Jewish person made her out of mud. It's possible. Green's announcement came a day after Democratic leaders released a statement saying they would vote to table Green's motion to vacate, saying the time has come to turn the page on this chapter of pro-Putin Republican obstruction. So Green's effort is doomed, which I imagine she's used to by now. Marjorie Taylor Green is a human leaf blower. In theory, she has a job to do, but her main contribution is noise. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sure. Anyway, speaking of maniacs with beautiful blue eyes, in a new Wall Street Journal profile, former members of RFK Jr.'s presidential campaign revealed that the operation is full of grifters and opportunists in addition to being financially and professionally dysfunctional. <sighs> well, you could knock me over with a feather is what one of these grifters on the RFK Jr. campaign said while explaining how taking penicillin to treat an infection can actually dissolve all your muscles. <laughs> In one bizarre incident, a campaign potluck ran into an unusual problem. Several staff members feared the electromagnetic radiation from microwaves. The campaign advised staffers to bring crockpots for the event, which is insane because everyone knows those things make your dick fall off. <laughs> Not a crockpot guy. <laughs> AIDS also said, it's like, how busy are you? You got you to gotta make dinner and then live a whole day and come back to find it? <laughs> it's like, come on. How can you need a crockpot if you're also, your phone says you look at it for seven and a half hours a day? If your phone says you look at it for seven and a half hours a day, you don't need the crockpot to save time. Congresswoman Elon Omar is getting the business after saying this while visiting Columbia to stand in solidarity with student protesters, which included her daughter. I think it is really unfortunate that people don't care about the, the fact that all Jewish kids should be kept safe and that we should not have to tolerate anti-Semitism um, or bigotry for all Jewish students. Oh, great. Seems like a perfectly made point. Nothing else to talk about. No other issues. She did it right. She said a good thing. Let's move on. Oh, wait. I'm just, just in. That wasn't the end of the clip. We should not have to tolerate anti-Semitism um, or bigotry for all Jewish students, whether they are pro-genocide or anti-genocide. Oh, come on. No, Elon, you had it. You were, you were right there. It's like I always tell myself and fail to listen. Stop talking sooner. <laughs> it's like, and then Bernie, it's like, then that leads to a whole news cycle about that comment. And it's like, I could sit here and tell you about Bernie Sanders telling Donna Bash, who asked Bernie Sanders about Elon Omar's comments from that college campus about the protesters and what the protesters are saying about their position about what's going on in Gaza. But that's pretty far from what's going on in Gaza. 
And we really prefer conversations about conversations about conversations about something than conversations about something. But I'm doing it as we speak. Speaking of people who should have stopped talking sooner, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem defended her decision to murder her dog, Cricket. I just hope people will read the book, find out the truth, because this was a dangerous animal. And I had a choice between keeping my small children and other people safe or a dangerous animal, and I chose the safety of my children. This is the Republican worldview in a nutshell. There is no gray area. There is no calling a dog trainer or taking her to a pet rescue. There is the complete annihilation of Christy Nob's entire family at the hands of an uncontrollable beast or spraying a dog's brains across a gravel pit before heading to church, which is a rib restaurant. <laughs> but it wasn't all laughs this week. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> as Florida's six-week abortion ban went into effect on Wednesday. In response, Vice President Kamala Harris said this in Jacksonville. Because of Donald Trump, more than 20 states have abortion bans. More than 20 Trump abortion bans. And today, this very day, at the stroke of midnight, another Trump abortion ban went into effect here in Florida. As of this morning, four million women in this state woke up with fewer reproductive freedoms than they had last night. She then hopped into a fan boat and started doing wheelies in a swamp, which did help take the edge off, but still a sad day for America. <laughs> Speaking of lateness ruining lives, according to The Wrap, the Christmas action movie Red One is a year behind schedule and massively over budget, due in part to the unprofessionalism of its star Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The Rock would reportedly show up late to set, sometimes by as much as eight hours. Do you smell what The Rock is cooking? It's traditional mole rojo, a sauce that must be lovingly simmered for many hours. Eight hours? That's not arriving late. That's arriving the next day. And that's even with all the time he saved not endorsing Joe Biden. But it gets better. According to their sources, The Rock likes to piss in water bottles. Here's a quote. On set, away from his trailer, if he needs to pee, he doesn't go to the public bathroom. He pees in a Voss water bottle and his team or a PA has to dispose of it. There, see, some people like it, said Amazon chairman Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Speaking of celebrities who arrive when they are ready, Barbara Streisand piqued our collective interest this week when she asked Melissa McCarthy in a since-deleted Instagram comment if McCarthy was taking Ozempic. Oh, 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 oh. No! <laughs> Later that day, Streisand wrote on social media, OMG, I went on Instagram to see the photos we'd posted of the beautiful flowers I'd received for my birthday. Below them was a photo of my friend Melissa McCarthy, who I sang with on my encore album. She looked fantastic. I just wanted to pay her a compliment. I forgot the world was reading. First of all, we don't even have a joke for this. She felt she had to explain why she was on Instagram. And the reason was to look at flowers she had received in real life. <laughs> In other celeb news, on her show this week, Drew Barrymore revealed she left a list of every sexual partner she's ever had at Danny DeVito's house. Oh, wait, this said Danny DeVito, pulling a small piece of paper that only had his name written on it? <laughs> you know what they say, your complete list of sexual partners is always in the last place you look. Danny DeVito's house. During an appearance on The Jennifer Hudson Show, Cher explained that she dates younger guys because men her age are all dead. So I guess she doesn't believe in love after life. Do you believe? Nice. <laughs> Great. Because of life after, she believes in life after love. Well, she asked the question. <laughs> so just, I'm just reaffirming the setup of this joke because you'll understand why in a second. So Cher doesn't want to date men her own age because they're all dead. Um, I'm newly single and ready to mingle, said Jimmy Carter. Speaking... <laughs> Speaking of ancient communications, this week a team of researchers revealed that for the first time they were able to decipher parts of a papyrus scroll that was buried in ash after the volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79. It's a technique they're calling cleaning the schmutz off. <laughs> the team was able to decipher the text by telling a bunch of Swifties that Taylor wrote the scroll and they came back with it fully deciphered in two hours. <laughs> Incredible. It's about Joe Alwyn. But parts of it. Of course, parts aren't. 
According to the American Time Use Survey, the average person in the U.S. has gained 10 minutes of sleep per day since their previous survey, although it's possible outliers are driving up the average by napping in courtrooms. But that doesn't make sense. A North Carolina toddler who was convinced there were monsters in her closet was, it turns out, hearing the sound of more than 50,000 bees in the walls. White noise machine, move aside. There's a new ambient noise in town, and it's called 50,000 bees inside your walls. <laughs> Child, you're being, you're being, you're being, you're being crazy. It's not a monster. It's 50,000 bees. Go to bed. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's not some monster. It's 50,000 actual bees. Go to bed. Dave and Buster's announced this week that its app will soon allow adults playing their arcade games to place bets against each other. Said a Dave and Buster spokesperson, we're just doing our part to demolish America's few remaining friendships between straight men. The skee-ball machine is running hot. I feel it. Please, just from me a few more tickets, said former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. 